you know, at the end of the Villanova game, I was watching Dorca try to move, and she didn't look like she was hobbling. I don't know if what kind of treatment she got in the 36 hours between games, but it couldn't, it, it had to hurt, and for her to do what she did tonight, what does that say about her? Well, Dorca's kind of been, you know, beat up since, uh, you know, September. She hasn't been 100% since September. And sometimes it's worse than others. And, um, you know, she hardly ever practices. So, uh, you know, I think after Friday, you know, um, I just think she had a better matchup tonight too, you know, where she, you know, she had somebody that she needed to guard in the low post and then have to chase people around the perimeter. So I just think it was a better, better matchup all the way around. And she just looked better, you know, felt better and looked better and played a whole lot better. With Aaliyah also responding after having not much of an impact on Wednesday, what did you see from her tonight to get off on a better foot? You know, I, I told some, I told these guys, our, our post players, you know, they'd, they'd all be averaging 20 if they just made half their layups, right? The uncontested ones, especially. You know, um, and, and I said the hard part's getting those. And they usually come if you work really hard on offensive rebounding. So in the Villanova game, we had two offensive rebounds. I think one by Kristen and one by Nika. That's embarrassing, right? So, you know, I think they took that to heart. And, you know, we... We worked really, really, really hard and won the rebound battle tonight, you know, against a team that was, you know, obviously not easy to rebound against. Um, but Aaliyah can, Aaliyah can impact the game like she did tonight, every game. She just has to choose to. She just has to get herself ready to. And hopefully she can give us something like tonight every night. You know, was, was there a lack of size, the reason that you just pounded the ball down inside there and, and drove into the lane so much, or did you just want to get your post players going? Um, I think it was a matter of, um, you know, last time we played them, you know, they hurt us a lot inside, you know. Their, their big kid really had a field day against us. And I thought that the um, best way to counter that was to go at her and make her play defense both the post players. So we wanted to start the game and do do that as much as we could, you know. And um, and and they and and those two work great together. The way, uh, first of all, the way that Paul guarded us, it gave us opportunities to get to the rim. Right? They were so aggressive on the perimeter, so aggressive. Um, so there were opportunities to go. The second part is, you know, we played four guards a lot. So that means that one of their big guys sometimes was caught on one of our guards. So we just made that a, a concerted effort that the more they press against us, the more we need to go by them. And then, you know, it was a set, a couple really set plays that I wanted to get Kristen going. And I felt that she could beat her man and get into the lane and finish, and she did. You do lose a game like the other night. Uh, do you make it a point of emphasis that, you know, we haven't lost back-to-back -back games in whatever it is, 29 years, I guess. Is that something that you stress with them, don't be the first to do that? No. No. They would have lost a long time ago if I did that. They would be scared. Um, no, 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 no. I, I don't think I've ever brought that up. Ever. I, I, you know, I never, bring, I never brought up the win streak in the conference. Never brought up, you know, when we were going through that 111 thing, I never counted for them. Um, you know, we just came to practice yesterday, and, and uh, all we talked about was how bad our effort was Friday night and how Villanova outplayed us in every phase of the game. Every, every, you know, from coaching down to the managers. They were better than us at everything. And uh, we just needed to turn that around. It had nothing, no mention at all of the other stuff, you know. Um, so I don't like to mention it around Jamel anyway, because she was on that team, and she says that if she would have started, 
we wouldn't have lost two in a row. So I'd never bring it up when she, you know, especially when she's around. Do you have a certain MO for bouncing back from a loss or coaching after a loss? It used to be that guys were pissed. That was the number one reason. You know, uh, we had, we had, uh, you know, we had established a culture here where um, l losing became uh, kind of uh, like I don't even want to. I don't even know how to describe it. It was just something that just was totally out of the realm of possibility that we're just not going to lose. And that when we did lose, I think the players were, if we ever did lose, they were genuinely in, I never had to say anything because the practices the next day were some of the most intense practices I've ever seen in my life after every loss. And then the game after that was usually one of our best games. You know, anymore, I don't know if that's still the case, but I know for however many years, 20 some years, however long it's been, you know, guys take losing really hard in Connecticut. I hope that never goes away.